In this video, I am going to talk about microservice architecture pattern that is database per service. In a monolithic architecture, we know we have a single large database. So suppose we have a single large database present here and instead of monolithic architecture, we have small few sets of microservice present here let's say app1, app2, app3 and all these microservices are connected to this single large database. Now it would be better if the data of all these microservices are stored independently. So we could have private table per service or private schema per service. In my view private schema per service is a better option than private table per service. So we divide this single large database into different schemas and store the data of these microservices there. Now instead of using independent database, a single large database would have several concerns and disadvantage. So we will look at each of these concerns and the disadvantage arise due to use of single large database with microservice. The very first you can see there is a tight coupling between multiple services here and the single large database. Now suppose my application too starts growing up getting more traffic and need to scale up right as application 2 is independent of application 1 and application 3 I can scale up easily but with the data storage that is stored in a single schema in a single large database a scaling and deployment would be a problem so the second concern if we can use a single large database is deployment and scalability of database and microservices also database replication could also be an issue because we need to replicate all whole set of data present in this single large database if we need a much wider space to store the data of microservices. Moreover, if my application 1 requires a different database, suppose my application 1 process graph, so for graph we have new 4j database and my application 2 suppose require an structured data so we have any no SQL database like MongoDB so if we are using a single large database it would not be possible to have a two different databases like Neo4j, no SQL database like MongoDB or structured query database like SQL so different types of database requirement is also a concern and disadvantage because Different services based on data needs needs to store and process the data. So let's modify instead of this single large database into a small database that would be private to each of these microservices. So again we have the same sets of microservices application 1, application 2 and application 3 and instead of single large database we would have a independent sets of database let's say db1 db2 and db3 each one dedicated to the microservices so db1 dedicated to application 1 db2 dedicated to application 2 and db3 dedicated to application 3 now all those concerns that we have looked previously now get addressed so the advantage of using database per services are there is a loose coupling between service and database obviously here you can see my application 1 has a dedicated database db1 so if my application 2 needs a data from db1 it would have to utilize application 1 first and through the methods present in application 1 we can get the data of db1 Second point, there is effective scaling and deployment. 
Now in case my application to needs a scale up, I can easily scale up my application to as well as my database. I do not need to scale up my other database like DB1 and DB3. So scaling and deployment here is very much effective if we have database per service architecture. Next point. Database to be used based on service requirement. So different service can use different database. Again, if we have requirement for a NoSQL database, then that microservice can use a NoSQL database. Any other microservice can use any other database like a SQL database or a graph database like New4j. So the microservice requirement is depend upon the data that they are going to process. And depending upon the data and kind of data storage, we can provide a particular database to that microservices. Now, since there are some advantages here, use of database per service also raises some concerns that need to be addressed in microservices architecture. And these concerns are very much important. So let's have a look on those of the concerns. Now suppose a user is hitting a request and that request is going through different sets of microservices. So let's say the first request come to app1, app1 process data and require some of the functionality of app2. So request move forward to app2 and subsequently to app3. Now app3 process the data, return the response to app2. Again, app2 process some of the data written by app3 and return the response to app1 and app1 finally process and return the response to the user. Now, in this scenario, you are seeing the particular request is not limited to my application one only. So it is kind of distributed transactions and request, right? And also we know the application one is a microservice and it has a dedicated database db1 so the data that is getting processed in this request are stored in different databases also so the concerns here arise due to distributed transactions and query is the first point a single request can span over multiple services like as I said earlier. So implementing distributed transactions is a concern here. Again, for implementing distributed transactions, there are separate architecture designs that need to be implemented to address the issues created due to distributed transactions. Second point, managing different types of database adds complexity. Again, if you have a structured query language, if you have graph, specific databases you need to learn those databases and commands so again it's kind of complexity and how to handle those databases moving to next point a single request can trigger a query that needs multiple data and these data could be stored over multiple database so implementation of a query that span over multiple services is a complex and challenging now again, this is a major concern because as I said earlier, the request that I am showing here is spanning over multiple services and maybe the request require a query that span over app1, app2 and app3 and require data of db1, db2 and db3. So implementing a query that span over multiple services and database is a complex and challenging and again a separate architecture design is there to address the concerns of implementing a distributed query. So in order to address these concerns, first distributed transaction, second distributed query. In microservice architecture, we have three patterns that we used mostly. So let's have a look on those patterns. 
for distributed transactions we use saga pattern so distributed transactions means your request is spanning over multiple services and this saga pattern we will look in brief in a separate video but to give a brief there are two types of implementation of saga pattern first is event based and second one is orchestration based now the first concern is resolved of distributed transactions that we can implement using saga pattern now with distributed query we have two design patterns that is first is api composition and second one is command query responsibility segregation so implementing a microservices architecture that involves database per service have some advantage and disadvantage also but it is good that you have a dedicated database for each of the microservices and we will look at all these patterns like saga pattern api composition command query responsibility segregation separately in each of the videos coming next so this was all about database per service design pattern in microservice architecture